Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got a fellow magician on. This is, this is going to be kind of fun. His name is Randy, Remy Connor. Are you there, Remy? Hey, how you doing? Greetings. And you're over on the East Coast right now, right? Yes, yes. East Coast, uh, currently Deerfield Beach, Florida. Deerfield? Yep. Is that a farm country? No, no, it's... Uh... <laughs> You know when you're from like the small town outside of the big town? This is the small town. Normally I tell people Fort Lauderdale or Miami, people are more familiar with those. Okay, suburb. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Got it. Pretty much. I'm on the western side of Minneapolis, so similar situation. Okay. Oh, Minnetonka, you know heard of Lake Minnetonka, right? I have heard of Lake Minnetonka. That's where Prince used to bathe his beauties. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching Purple Rain uh, three days ago. There you go. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> I wasn't oh, there, but I trust it. Oh, it's a funny scene. So the way I do these, I do them kind of short because I believe that people have their uh, time commodities. There's not too much time in this world. And it's the uh, same for all sure. of us. You know? they, they used to say time is money, but that's not true because then we'd all have the same amount, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just found out who you are, and uh, I think that video is the best way to be known, liked, and trusted. So who's Remy? You married, got kids? Are you single and wild, or what's going on? Oh, okay. So this is an interesting moment. Just met a girl. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, so very excited about that. I mean, like, <laughs> oh yeah, ago. like ten minutes ago. <laughs> literally, just walked inside. No, uh, uh, we met about a month ago. I was uh, okay. performing at. Uh, actually, I'm very excited that I get to say all of this on camera. Uh, I was really busy Super Bowl weekend because it took place in Miami. So uh, I worked at the Live Party at Fountain Blue, which is one of the biggest parties down here and Shaq's Funhouse. Oh, both of those, I saw some stuff about that. Yeah, it was so much fun. I, cool. I couldn't believe it. Just the, the talent that I was surrounded with was incredible. But uh, the following night when I was at the Fountain Blue party, I was performing with a ballerina, and she wanted to learn how to eat fire, and I know how to eat fire, so <laughs> we, we linked up, and that turned out to be one of the most amazing first dates I have ever had without expecting it to be a date. Well, cool. Might go somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping so. We're both feeling pretty strong about it. That's neat. Then you have an assistant, you don't have to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is definitely one of the plus sides, <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the upsides. Absolutely. How long have you been doing magic? Ooh, 18 years. Woo! 18 now, years. I've been performing now 18 years. And once it gets you, it gets you. I, I started when I was like four or five years old, and I'm 62 now, and I've somewhat retired. But, God, there's always something that gets me back wanting to gig again. It's kind of cool. You know, performing, it's uh, – I, I always say that it is better than any drug you'll ever do and the best sex you'll ever have. But, but magic is way different than other types of performing, and I express oh, yeah. this to people in that all the work that you see us, that, that we do, you don't see it. Not at all. Not at all. We simply you just grabbed a coin and put it in our hand. You didn't see all the work that was involved in that. So it's actually one of the big points that I make um, for, for people because they, they don't realize that magic is totally different depending on who's around, yeah. right? Um, magic is the only art form that requires an audience. It requires... Right somebody to actually be aware of what's going on. If nobody's aware of what's going on, you're just practicing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you have a song, you sing a song, and whether or not somebody's there or not, it's always going to be a song. A painting will be a painting, but magic only exists in the audience's mind. Right. Exactly. And it could be different for everybody else. Different, different Absolutely. People. You know, it's, it's funny because magic really is, is uh, or mystery is really just the idea of there being something more, right? Mm -hmm. And some people want to know the secret because if they learn that secret, that means that there are more secrets for them to learn. While at the same time, somebody who doesn't want to know the secret, to them, that mystery means that there's so much more than they can ever understand. Well, for all the people, people out there that want mystery. to know the secret, you don't want to know the secret because it really <laughs> takes a lot. Out. I always use the uh, analogy of, uh, did you know that Santa Claus is your dad? It kind of deflates all the mystique behind Santa Claus, you know, when you find sure. not that it's not that it is your dad, you know, but <laughs> right, right. But you know, just 
the concept of learning something from childhood. Yeah. I, now listen, Santa Claus, maybe dad, but the tooth fairy, definitely real. I think it's all real inside your head, man. <laughs> it is, it is. I, I'll tell you a quick little story, if, not that this is my stage, but I had a situation yeah. happen. I was out in LA and Venice Beach, and this was my first time out there. So hearing all the belly dancers clinging things and the incense and all the <laughs> craziness going on, it was kind of weird yeah. to me. And I was walking out there with my friend, and we're just strolling along. I was looking over here. I look over there. I look at the shirt shop. I look at the, the things to eat. And I look back, and he's gone. <laughs> he vanished. And I just, there's nobody around. I go, where <laughs> did he go? And it fooled me. And for a while, I was thinking, whoa, this is like surreal kind of stuff. And then oh. all of a sudden, he walks out of this shirt shop. That's the funny. timing was just perfect where when yeah. I was looking around, I looked back and he was gone. He didn't try and ditch me. He just casually right. walked into the place and all of a sudden he was vanished and it was really, I got to feel magic. You it's know? amazing when you have those little moments. I love them. Yeah. I love them so much. Do you do more stage stuff, corporate stuff, strolling stuff, everything? But Everything. Absolutely everything. I, I fell in love with, with the mystery arts. So uh, I delved into magic and mentalism. I was doing mainly close-up uh, street magic stuff in the beginning. Then I started getting into sideshow stuff where it put me on stage. And now I've got a healthy combination of both. I have about four different stage shows uh, that I tool through. And close-up magic for ages for any audience. I've done literally every possible show that you can think of in every venue possible, in every age group, with every culture. So at this point, I've, I've created magic that allows me to just interact with everybody, regardless of how close we are or if we're on stage. That's, that's always been my style. That's another thing I think is really cool about magic is that it's universal. Anybody, yeah. regardless of language or gender or age. I did a show mm -hmm. once. The, the hardest show I did, I think, was in Bali because all the people were from different cultures. Japan, yeah. Australia, Germany, Balinese, Canadian. There was all these different cultures. And it was really hard yeah. to vibe between all these different people. Right, have you been around, I suppose, different parts of the world? I, I have not traveled as much as I would like, but I definitely have traveled to the places, uh, to some fun places. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did a Baltic Sea tour. So I got to do Germany and uh, Estonia, Russia, Sweden, and Finland. Wow. That was incredibly fun. Uh, I've been to 48 of the 50 states. I performed in 48 of the 50 states. Uh -huh. That feels pretty good. I did most of that by the time I was 23. Wow. Uh, yeah. Last year I went to Italy, Puerto Rico, Costa Rica. Uh, I got a German Shepherd and she actually travels with me. You do any so magic with the German Shepherd? Not yet. Not yet. She's more of a more of like the best friend. It's a service animal, but the best friend. Now you got that girl. You're going to kick the dog to the side? Are you going to... Oh, no. <laughs> no. She's got a dog, too. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, the we Brady got friends. Bunch. The Brady <laughs> Bunch. The good house. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> so what, what um, kind of uh, gigs are you looking for? Are you looking to... Because to, I know that for a while, as a kid... We just did like the small boxes and tubes. Then we started getting into doves and things. And then we decided to scale back mm -hmm. and then just do the close up. Are you aspiring to be the big illusionist or are you just cool with doing? I'm cool with what I'm doing because I'm only doing the things that I've wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so at this point, it, it's always just been something that I've created, something I've wanted, something that I fought for and saw to the end. Uh, my goal right now is doing what I'd like to call a magic installation, uh, something I'm working on. So like, you know, you have art installations, like Art Basel. They'll have uh, like the giant rubber band ball or, or the heaping thing of laundry, right? It's like a thing that you can go in and look around and an actual piece of artwork. Uh, okay. I'm trying to create something like that for magic. Um, That's interesting. It's a, a place that will exist. You get to see a show. But I wanted to create something where the show starts when you get there and it ends when you leave. Not exactly at the show time from 8 to 9.15. So an experience. Exactly. Got it. Very cool. I think that's hot. Thanks. 
especially with the younger generation, the millennial type kids, they want experiences. They don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we they should take talk anything you can that. touch. I got a, some, a thing that I'd like to do. I want to create like a festival, kind of like a fringe festival. Okay. But it's magic. Oh, wow, that's. So I mean, you've got magicians hitting fun. the streets, magicians in theaters, magicians in bars, magicians in restaurants, formal if shows, you, informal shows. If you get a chance, look up a convention called Masters of Magic. Okay. It takes place in Italy. It's in uh, May. And what they do is. It's just a magic convention. You get people together, magicians from all over, and they talk, they do lectures, but they have performances. And because there's so many magicians in town, all the local bars are taken over, and it's on a street okay. where exactly. you can perform on the street. So if you wanted to go and check something out, you get some ideas. That's the concept. It would be more, 80% of it would be more uh, general public stuff, and then the 20% would be your magic lectures and all that stuff. Sure. There's so many magicians sure. there. Because I think magic is such a universal thing. There's very few people that don't like it. And if they, if they don't like it, it's because somebody tricked them and made them feel like an idiot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I always say that if uh, you don't like magic, it's because you haven't experienced it yet. Yeah. Pretty much the real magic because it's... Uh, mm -hmm. It expands the mind. It's, uh, Absolutely. The other thing that's cool about it is, is just by the very nature of it, it's magic. You can do whatever you want, whatever you yeah. can possibly conceive. And, you know, they used to get down on people exposing the sawed woman. They found out you used two women in the box. Then all of a sudden someone figured out, how can we do this with one? And that just ab abolished that. And then who was it? I think it was the, um, I think it might have been the Pendragons. They did it with a clear box. Oh, right. Right, right. So magicians are always coming up with new stuff. So you're not going to be able to figure it out. And I think I saw, what was it, Copperfield? He had the thing. It only had to be like this big or something, right? That was covering his waist. Really, really tiny. He ended up doing it almost fully exposed. It's either Chris Angel or Copperfield. Yeah, the buzzsaw thing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It's ingenious. That's another thing I love about the magic is some of the ingenious oh, yeah. stuff that, uh, that happens. Oh, my God where it's almost, it's almost exposed. The you things that people cause... create for magic is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm getting ready to do a seance next week and the stuff that I've been working on just to do this, it's so much fun to talk to people about. <laughs> and you almost want to tell them how it works, but that just bursts almost. their bubble. That almost. Their bubble. My wife loves the magic and whenever we start talking about it, she leaves the room. She doesn't want to know. It's na 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 Oh, that's funny. Doesn't want to hear it. So tell us how to get a hold of you if someone wants to hire you. I'm assuming if they got the budget, they're going to bring you up here to Minnesota. They can come up here. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I've, uh, I've actually performed in Minnesota a couple of times. Uh, I got flown up there for a handful of events. Okay. Really fun. I got a tattoo when I was there. That was cool. Like my third tattoo I ever got <laughs> at the time. Well, they do that stuff here. Sure. Yeah. Tattoos. Oh, yeah. Uh, but how to get in touch with me? You can uh, go to my website, which is remyconnor.com. Uh, you can send me an email, though you'll have to coordinate with my assistant, who does a fabulous job of managing and all then. the uh, dates and minor details. And then, of course, you'll talk to me, and we'll get all the major details out. I'm on social media at Remy Connor on Instagram, Remy Connor on Facebook. So it's Remy R E M Y Connor C O N N O R, right? Exactly. And then you just Google it and poof, you come up, right? R-E-M-Y-C-O-N-N-O-R. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I don't like, like I said, I don't like to do these too long because it'll come out of your sure. time. But if we, uh, you want to do another one, all you got to do is log it on and uh, do it. And we can, if you got, you got a special niche or if you're doing a tour or if you're coming up to Minneapolis and you're doing a public thing and you want me to get it out, or if you want to connect with corporate, um, I, I just finished my event planner expo just March 4th. Oh, okay. I produce a trade show where event planners come and find all their resources. That's how I used to get all my really? gigs locally here. Okay. Yeah. They would come from. That's you know, pretty cool. There's a lot of corporate here. Target, Cargill, Medtronic, 3M, Honeywell. When was that? Gentlemen. It's Friday, uh, Wednesday. Oh, wow. I mean, you literally just did it like yes. two days ago. Okay. Yeah, uh, when's your next one? The first week in March. It's always been the first week in March. So it'll be March. 3rd. Okay. So it'll be next year. And okay. then there's other things I do, too, that are event-related. I just like the concept of events. Part of my mission is to move this online chatter back into real-life activity. 
Oh, that's awesome. That's why I like the video. That's I awesome. get to see you and talk to you and, and have a cadence in the voice. And then it'd be cool if you came up here and we could actually sit at a table and have a coffee and do this. Do some magic. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of things here. You know, Eagle Magic Store is uh, one of the oldest magic stores, longest running retail stores in the country. It's something like 119 years old or something like that. Wow. And then there's uh, the magic underground that happens here. There's a little comedy. Yes. Thing. And then yes, Sam, I've heard of that. Sunday Night Magic is up here. So, and, and I got a little uh, thing called the, the Magic Lounge that I do on the boat and the, on the river and the lake up here oh really yeah we do like a That's dinner and cool. show kind of thing yeah oh, there's magic in minnesota <laughs> there is there's a lot of magic in minnesota um yeah i'll have to reach out we'll keep in touch we'll link up at some point will do let's connect i'm gonna beam cool. this up i appreciate you taking the time my friend so we're gonna Thank you for having me here <laughs> okay. Peace. chat soon